she has said that she really died that day, the day she was forced out into exile. And in exile, she raised a family of six children. And, and then that completed, she turned to the God and to the faith that had sustained her throughout all of that. She joined an Orthodox order in France and eventually founded a monastery in the United States in Elwood City near Pittsburgh. And that is where I met Mother Alexandra, or Princess Ileana of Romania. I met her a few years ago, and it was a day that, that I, frankly, will always cherish. It's just a delight to have you on the program, Mother Alexandra. How are you? Uh, thank you. I'm doing all right. I have a little bit of a flu. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, can't be helped, can it? No, <laughs> no, can't be helped. You're, you're such a stoic. You really are. You know, you I cannot imagine uh, the emotional roller coaster that you have been on in the last uh, four or five months. Well, I admit it has been a uh, very difficult uh, time, spiritually speaking. You know, I've been sort of torn in half between what is here and what is there and uh, between hopes and uh, hopes that uh, the third shall be put. It that way, then nobody really knows what the situation is. Now, your it would be your great nieces, right, have been over in Romania. Your King Michael's daughters have gone over there. Yes, and they've been very well received, mm -hmm. and they've been allowed to do things. But I really don't know much more about it than that. Uh, I, I'm, I know they're doing very good work, but uh, the... Uh, Misery there is so immense, uh, it's, uh, it's almost, you, one cannot uh, c conceive of it. For instance, there are 40,000 uh, orphans between the age of, uh, well, newborn to, uh, to uh, five, uh, 10 years old. And those above that are 100,000. One simply can't, can't believe it. Not to be understood. Now I remember when I when I was spent that day with you, we we briefly talked about uh, about what was going on in Romania at the time, and what was going on then was, of course, that Ceausescu was in in control, and uh, I could see that it was very painful for you to even even talk about that man and what he had done to your country. But it was much worse than I realized. I must say it's much, much worse than, than I imagined, and that the country has been so destroyed from the roots up, you know. That's a, that's a tragedy. Can, can you, are, are you stunned at how quickly uh, change did come? Did you really think you would live to see uh, no. Ceausescu removed? Absolutely not. I never thought it would happen. Uh, I believed it would happen in the end, but I never believed it would happen so fast. I don't think anybody did. It suddenly sort of took uh, Eastern Europe by, by storm. And then it looked like as if Romania would do nothing, but Romania then did. But unfortunately, I don't think it's as complete as we at first imagined it was. There's a great deal of political chaos over there now. A terrible uh, a chaos, and, and nobody seems... I think that the worst thing that the communists have left behind us, as far as they have left at all, I mean, they're still very much there, uh, is this uh, terrible uh, lack of confidence uh, in one person in the other. This, this, I think, is the worst of all. Are you saying you mean the, the self-esteem of the people has no, been damaged? That is, no, not that. I think there are the proud of themselves that they've had the courage to... The young people are full of courage and full of pride, and they feel that it's worthwhile being a Romanian again, and they're proud of their revolution, you know. But I don't know whom they trust. I see. That's, that, that's the tragedy. So you know, They don't trust each other. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, and the, and the joy that you you know it would seem should be able to feel uh, is really tempered with a great deal of uh, sadness and concern. I'm afraid so. Yes, yes. 
indeed. Now, of course, we are waiting for the uh, elections, uh, which how <laughs> really uh, honest they're going to be is, I think, very much of a question. Now, there are elections that are scheduled for May 20th, I, uh, yes. I understand. Yes. And I think the only good uh, news we have out of it all is that the four major uh, parties of the opposition have joined forces. Mm -hmm. uh, but, of course, uh, the um, actual government, which is, after all, still the same one that it was before, it has all the power. I mean, it has the army, it has all the communication, it has the television, it has everything in its hands. You know, it, it occurs to me, it must be very uh, difficult for you who have been living really uh, a religious life and with, your, you know, the, the monastery you founded, this contemplative order, and now you find yourself uh, really having to deal with, uh, with a constantly changing political situation uh, in your in your country has that been difficult for you to sort of become uh, very much active in the secular world again shall I say thank you for understanding that very few people understand how difficult that that point is and how difficult it has made it all through Lent and uh, through the whole Easter season to be torn in half like this all the time mm -hmm. Because inevitably, I, can, I, I, I am interested, I must be interested in what's happening in my country. It, it matters also to my church what is happening in, in, in the country. Yes. And at the same time, it really doesn't go, as you said, with the contemplative <laughs> life. It has made a, a, a sort of rift inside myself. It's been a very difficult time. But uh, I think that I have overcome it now and uh, have uh, settled back to, to, to say that uh, one must trust God. He brought, brought us as far as this, that uh, there is a plan in the world, and uh, that uh, justice and uh, truth must survive. It will. It's always been, you know, if you read the Bible from the very beginning, it's always been a remnant that has helped. Uh, up, and I think that uh, this is what uh, our role is wherever we happen to be, if it's in Romania or if we're here in America. It's, uh, it's important that we should uh, stick to what we believe is the truth. And if all people did that, really, truthfully, I think that there is a solution. Well, let us hope. Uh, let us hope that we can find that somehow. Princess Ilyana, Mother Alexandra, is my guest. If you have a question for her, feel free. Three 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 W T A E is the phone number. We'll take a quick break and be back. You can tell when someone. Welcome back, my guest, Mother Alexandra, born Princess Ilyana of Romania, and uh, now heading a monastery which she founded in Elwood City. Pennsylvania. You know, I said before that your your life really reads like an incredible novel. You lived it. Do you? I suppose it doesn't feel that way to you, or does it? it does uh, I sort of look back on all that was, and I think how difficult it would be to try and explain to, for instance, to my uh, grandchildren and to my great grandchildren what my life really was like before I came to the United States. Well, you were born, uh, I mean, you were really, truly born in a in a castle. You lived the life of a princess in every way, didn't you? Yes, yes, and absolutely uh, so. And, um, you know, uh, of course, I think where people don't understand that if you are born one, you you don't realize it in the sense you are born what you are and you take children take things for natural as that that they certainly uh, yes uh, it was your life it was who you were home in which you are born and I think that w what my mother did for us was that she made it such a wonderful home. Your mother, can can I ask you some questions? Your mother was uh, by all accounts a remarkable woman. There... My mother was a very wonderful woman. She was uh, one of the most genuine people one could meet. And she was extremely kind and understanding. 
and lovable in every way. And so that uh, I think that when I think back on, on home, what home was for me, it, it is in the palace of Kotrochen, uh, where I was born, because it, she made it such a real a place to return to, to come back to. Um, she was always glad to receive one. It was warm. It was. Uh, it really was a happy household. <laughs> it's hard. One cannot imagine how difficult it would be to make a castle into like a happy home. It, you know, it, it sounds so big and cold. You wouldn't think of anything else <laughs> if you don't know anything else. And yet now you're you're sitting in in Elwood City in a really a rather Spartan uh, little little uh, home and and room and and that feels comfortable to you too. Oh, completely yes. No, I I think that uh, don't forget I went through the First World War and the Second World War, <laughs> so that uh, a hardship isn't anything new to me. You went through no not hunger, no. Yes. You know. And, uh, like, I'm not a bit afraid of, of infection because I've been through so typhoid and typhus and all those things, and um, they don't impress me, so to speak. Um, no, I've always taken things as just as they came, and if it was like that, well, it was like that. Sometimes it wasn't easy, I admit, because I wasn't prepared, shall we say. You weren't what prepared yes, for? You, no, you were pre prepared to earn a living. <laughs> you you have said you're not a very good uh, housekeeper because you certainly weren't prepared to have to uh, no, dust and vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> not a great cook. I, I, I do have relations who who were very good housekeepers, but I never was, and it didn't interest me. You know, and then I had to, and if I had to, well, then I did it. I always felt that. I would do what I had to do, and I would enjoy it. Well, that has stood you in good stead. Your children are all in Europe, are they not? Uh, no, my eldest son is in Detroit, and he has an enormous family of his own. Uh, he has uh, five children and has now uh, four grandchildren. And uh, But my three daughters are in uh, Europe, and one son is in Europe. Have any of them uh, gone back to Romania? No, no, and they also are waiting to see what will happen. Do they have any memory of Romania? Oh, yes, very much so, and uh, very, my eldest son especially. And he, we still speak Romanian to each other. And uh, he had an invitation, in fact, to go back now to um, the 40th... Um, anniversary of his um, uh, school his and school I, reunion his, school, uh, his old schoolmate <laughs> wanted him to come to a reunion and he is he going to go no it's unfortunately his oh. invitation came too late but it's awfully touching that they even thought of it it's wonderful that's just it wonderful it is wonderful after all he's 15 when he left and he's 57 now your nephew, King King Michael, who uh, was uh, on his way to Romania and was told by the government of Romania not to come, they did not uh, issue him a visa, he has led a life that uh, is, is unbelievably interesting and uh, reads like a novel as well. He was what, put on the throne at the age of five initially? Yes. Yes, he had a very sad ch uh, childhood, I think. Now, he is your, he is your brother's no, son. No, he had no brothers and sisters. He, uh, he is your brother's son, though. He's my brother's son, yes. Mm -hmm. I think that he had a very unhappy ch uh, childhood because he was torn between his father and his mother all the time. And uh, the political situation in which he grew up was also tense beyond words. His father actually put him on the throne and then returned and overthrew him, didn't he? Did, yes, yes. Uh, uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, uh, really, uh, I think he is a remarkable man to have uh, come out of it all the serene, uh, quiet, uh, young man that he is. Well, he's not so young anymore, actually. 
<laughs> well, young, but he, well, it's all relative. He's 68 years old. <laughs> exactly, so he's not young. But uh, it has uh, made of him, there's no bitterness in the man. Uh, he um, thinks very carefully about what he does. He's a wonderful father. Uh, and I'm sure he would make a wonderful constitutional king. Well, I want to talk to you about that. I want to take a break, get to some commercials out of the way. I want to come back and, and talk to you about whether or not you really think that uh, the Romanian people would be well served to put uh, King Michael uh, back on the throne and uh, to have essentially a, a, a constitutional monarchy. We've got some callers on the line, too, Mother right. Alexandra, who want to talk to you. So let me take a break, and we'll come back and go to the phones and uh, a few more questions from uh, me, too, I suppose. It's my show. I'm Lynn Cullen. This is News Talk, 1250 WTAE. Welcome back. Uh, my guest, Mother Alexandra, uh, born Princess Ileana of Romania. I remember asking you once, Mother Alexandra, if you if you felt this sort of split in your personality. Where, do, you st do you ever still think of yourself as, and I would imagine these days, more so as, as pr the princess again? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. No, thank God, no, no, no. That 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 isn't the problem. Why do you say thank God, no? <laughs> because I think it would be terrible to be to be split, you know, uh -huh. between the two things. No, my my problem is is a different one. Uh, it is that um, I feel that those people who have been faithful to to me and to the to the family in general in Romania and who expect me to come back. Uh, that is the difficulty. I feel a duty towards those who have been faithful. And you mean the Romanians who have remained faithful yes, to your the family? Romanians who have been, uh, remained faithful. And there are so many of them. And also, strangely enough, amongst the young, which I didn't expect to call, I get wonderful letters from young people in Romania. You, uh, you once told me that you were really, when you, you know, when those of us who were not born as princesses uh, think of what that must be, we, we always think it just sounds like, uh, you know, having everything you want and uh, living a very spoiled existence. But you told me you were really brought up uh, to think of yourself as a, as a servant of yes. the people. And so that, of course, has remained. And strange enough, that has made my life as a monastic also much easier because I find that I obey and follow much easier than many other people do because I've done it all my life. You went from serving your people to serving your God. Yes. So it wasn't so difficult. Yes, not so difficult. Um, you then hold out hope that the uh, Romanians will ask for your family to come back to the throne? I don't think it's an immediate thing. I think it would be bad even if it were if it were to happen immediately because uh, I think the situation is so uh, unsure in the world in general, not only in Romania. I think if you uh, only Czechoslovakia seems to be really coming out of it. And, and when all the others are all in difficulties. Yes, right. Uh, I think it's a world problem, and uh, I do believe that the end uh, uh, for Romania would be a uh, constitution monarchy as it was in the time of my parents. I really do think that that uh, is the solution. But if it's the immediate solution, that really I couldn't answer. Mm -hmm. A constitutional monarchy uh, like they have in, in, in what? In, in Holland? Belgium. Or in Belgium, okay. So the king not really ruling. No, the, the king doesn't rule, no. No, he, he, he. But uh, you see, he is king by, uh, by the grace of God and the will of the people. And he serves as, uh, as a symbol of the nation? He serves as a symbol of the nation and also as the ultimate person that one can appeal to. He's not somebody who has to, shall I say, uh, push his way to get there. You know, he is there. Okay, we've got, let, let me let some of the callers through. They've been hanging on and on and on, and I'm, I'm not sharing you. In Thornburg on line one, go ahead. You're talking to Mother Alexandra. Mother Alexandra, I've been an admirer of yours since I visited Mary Hill, which is in the state of Washington and is a museum dedicated to 
your mother and your family, which I'm sure you know about. What I want to know is, do you know or have you met Prince Philip of England's mother, who is also an Orthodox nun? Uh, yes, yes, yes. She uh, she was a, a cousin, and uh, I was very fond of her. But I can't say that I knew her very intimately. I met her several times, and uh, we always got on very well together. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. My, my, my pleasure. I mean, actually, you are related to most of the, the royalty of Europe, are you not? More or less to all of them, yes. <laughs> More or less to all of them. Do you keep in touch with any of them? Uh, mostly with the English family. But quite a few of, of the others, too, you know. But uh, mostly with uh, with the English family. Who are you closest to? And are you, are you close to the the Queen Mum? I remember I, you talking. The Queen Mum, I suppose, really most, and then the Queen herself. Okay. When when you go over, I know you travel to uh, to Europe on occasion. Do you? I mean, do you stay with with them? If I'm able to go, I well, <laughs> the Queen Mum has always invited me to come and stay with her, but always she's been in Scotland or something. And and you don't want to go to. See <laughs> I don't have much time when I go over. I uh, want to see my own children. So yeah. usually it ends just by a lunch or a tea or something with uh -huh. them. Okay, uh, Su Suzanne in Penn Hills. You're talking to Mother Alexandra. Hello, um, I have a question. I was uh, brought up in a Catholic school, and the nuns that taught us used. Uh, they were all from Germany, and they had escaped during the Nazi regime, and they taught us uh, the religion and our lessons, I guess through the German way, the very stern, and they also used a lot of uh, Nazi horror tales, I guess, to intimidate us into behaving or learning. And um, it pushed me away from my religion, and I want to go back, but I'm having trouble separating the two, and I wondered if you could give me some advice you know, and where to start to go back to. She's, she's looking to you for religious counsel, Mother yes, Alexander. Yes, it is, and, and you are, you're Roman Catholic. Yes. Well, of course, I think you must go back to your own church. And remember one thing, that because you have had a bad experience somewhere in the church, it's only the human part of it. The church in itself is never really touched by it. What uh, makes us see that the church really is a, a holy thing uh, uh, is that in spite of the, its bad servants, it has survived so long. And uh, it, it's there that we really find the comfort because it's uh, without the church we cannot have the sacraments and it's the sacraments that really bring us into union with God. Thank you very much for your call. 333-WTAE, the number, if uh, anybody else wants to uh, call in. I'm not going to keep Mother Alexandra for more than another uh, 10 minutes because uh, she uh, is, is not well, and she's uh, graciously agreed to stay with us through most of the hour. You know, when I, when I first met you, I also met uh, Father Roman, who who also had uh, suffered much under uh, the Ceausescu regime. Was it, was it was Ceausescu who had imprisoned him for so many no, years? before Ceausescu. Oh, before Ceausescu. Mm -hmm. So the church uh, has been uh, not treated well in, in Romania oh, for no, years. No, no, indeed not. No, it has not. It has suffered a great deal, and I think is still suffering a great deal. When are you going to go back? I mean, surely you're going to... Uh, I, I really don't know um, the country itself and the people, but I, I really haven't got a roof over my head, you know. Let, Mother Alexandra, let me take uh, just uh, a final quick break and, and, and then uh, come back. We've got a lot of callers who want to talk to you, and I'll, I'd like to get right. as many in as oh, I possibly... I'm, I'm holding out. You are? Yes. You always have, Mother, the indomitable Mother Alexandra, Alexandra, Princess Ileana of Romania. We'll be back after this. Here's a little map for details. And for Pittsburgh and vicinity, the Joe DiNardo forecast is today beautiful, mostly sunny and warm, high of 82. And the same can be said for tomorrow and Thursday. So beautiful, beautiful summer-like spring weather. Currently in Pittsburgh, it's mostly sunny and it's 67 degrees. You know, a lot of people, Mother Alexandra, ask me, wh wh how did you end up in Elwood City? Why would you choose to found a monastery in Elwood City, Pennsylvania? Uh, well,
Well, because it's a very, uh, uh, it's hilly and uh, it's very beautiful. And also it was uh, very central for a lot of uh, Orthodox uh, parishes of uh, a different uh, national descent. And this is what was my dream was that we should have a, um, an English-speaking monastery in which all Orthodox would feel at home. How many people do you live there with? Uh, twelve. Uh, we're twelve sisters and uh, we, and the uh, resident priest. And uh, we are hoping to build. This is the whole thing. We need to build because we don't have enough room. We cannot take any new sisters in because we don't have room. And we have a great deal of guests also. And uh, it's difficult to put them up. <laughs> and we could do a much greater work uh, with people mm -hmm. uh, if we had where to put them up. So we are dreaming of, of uh, enlarging or rather building a whole new wing. Uh, and so then the old monastery would become the guest house and we would move into the new building. It occurs to me that you're an administrator, too. Where do you get all your energy? Well, my energy, the good, the good Lord gives me. I'm not a good administrator. I leave that to our abbess, who is excellent in that way. Okay. <laughs> El, El Trita in Emsworth uh, has a question for you. Go ahead, El Trita. Thank you very much, Mother Alexandra. I remember during World War I, uh, Queen Maria of Romania... And I wondered if this was your mother or your brother's wife, which would make her then the... Uh, no, my mother. She was your mother. Yes. That's. I just wanted to keep that straight because I'm I'm a, a history buff, and and I didn't realize... My mother, that, yes, and her, uh, her husband was King Ferdinand. Ferdinand, that's yes, right. And, it, and he uh, made the uh, agrarian reform which gave the Arab land to the peasants. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you very much for receiving my call, Mother. Well, thank we're you. very glad to do so. Thank you. Th thank you. Uh, somebody sent me a book when they heard that you were going to be on the program that uh, called The Last Romantic, which was written about your mother. Do you like that book? Do you know that book? It's a very good book. Uh, I don't agree with all of it, but I think that it's the best book that so far has been written of my mother, and uh, Mrs. Pakula has really quite, uh, become quite a friend. The author. The <laughs> author, yes. yes. She wrote a very nice article now about me in... Uh, Mirabella. Mirabella, yes. Yes, that's right. That was sent to me, too, so... Uh, you're getting quite a bit. Uh, actually, I remember when I came to you, uh, you had asked me if I knew anything about Vanity Fair magazine. They were after you to do a story. And uh, at the time, I didn't know much, and I didn't know what to tell you. But you are uh, a subject of great interest to uh, to reporters. Now there's a new one that's interested, uh, uh, Special Report. Special Report. Is that a good magazine? I, I have no idea. It looked very grand, what they sent me. Okay, I, I got a, I got somebody sitting here who's nodding her head and saying it's a wonderful magazine. So, uh -huh. well, it looked fantastic to me. Yes. So you you seem to attract the best. Ja oh. <laughs> Jack and Penn Hills, you're talking to Mother Alexandra. Hello, Mother. How are you? Uh, thank you. It's, 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 I consider it a privilege to talk with you, uh, Mother. I'm a member of the Byzantine Catholic Church. And yes. I'd like to know. Uh, what are your hours at the monastery? Are you open to the public at all times? Yes, of course, sir. all the time. All the time? Yes. I certainly would, because I certainly intend to, and you're near Elwood City. Yes. Because I had read the article several months ago, uh, quite a while, in the uh, Pittsburgh Press about your particular monastery, and I took it quite a liking, and I'd like to visit you people out Please there. Please do. Let me ask you, sister, do you have any, ever have any, uh, uh, dis discourses with the Byzantine? Church, or have you ever talked with any from? Uh, oh yes, of course. I mean, I mean, if they if they want to come and see us and visit us, we're only too glad. And uh, if they invite me, I would go. Yes. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, I hope to see you soon. Uh, thank okay. you very much. And take care. 
thank you. Thank you. I mean, when you say, oh, come, come, uh, you, you mean you don't mind people just dropping in on you? Well, we prefer if they let us know beforehand. Right, call ahead. Of not doing so. Okay. <laughs> Especially on Saturdays and Sundays, we know that that's a sort of free for all. <laughs> <laughs> Marcy in the South Hills, go ahead, please. Marcy? Oh, uh, sister, I've always wanted to talk to a real live princess, and now I have the chance. And I wanted to ask you, what do you think of our present American lifestyle, and how will it affect future generations? That's, <laughs> uh, that's a difficult question. In 20 words or less, Mother Alexandra. <laughs> well, what shall I say? Uh, I think in some ways, uh, the, when you meet the serious part of America, it's uh, inspiring and wonderful. And when you see the other side of it, it's rather frightening and distressing. And uh, I must say that when I first came to America, and it will seem to you that that was a very, very long time ago, because this was in 1926, I was very impressed by the behavior, the good behavior and the good manners of uh, the young people of America, and I am... I can't say that I am impressed by their good manners today. Certainly not. No. Well, that is distressing, I think, to uh, to all of this. I, I wonder if that is a, a condition that we you would find in other countries, too. I think it is pretty bad everywhere, I think. Uh, but it, it somehow, of course, uh, living here, I see more of it here. When I go abroad, I only see my own family, and uh, we still have good manners. I, I have to tell you, this has been such a such a delight to uh, to talk to you again, and I and I must say that I hope that you can soon travel to Romania, and I hope that uh, your fear of what you will see will not be fully realized. I hope that it can be a happy homecoming somewhat. I hope so. I hope so. The the the, the king was very nice, and he said, "Well, we'll go back together," and of course that would be wonderful. Well, we will look forward uh, to that. I'm sure that if you and the king go back together, you will have so many reporters and cameras and photographers around you that we'll all get to witness this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know that you'll look... It's all very unexpected, isn't it? It is. It truly is. And I, I have to tell you, when the news uh, started coming out of Romania, I, the, the first person I thought of was you and of what must have been your, your joy at the time. I'm, I'm very happy for you. Well, thank you very much, and uh, let us pray that it will really come out well in the end. Thank you, Mother Alexandra. Thank you for, for being so kind to me always. Thank you, and, uh, and I hope you're feeling better. Uh, marvelous woman, wonderful woman. I, well, I needn't say that. You've just listened to her. Mother Alexandra, formerly, not formerly, she still is, I guess, Princess uh, Ileana, daughter of King Ferdinand and Queen Maria of uh, Romania. 333 WTAE is the number. We've got a few minutes left just uh, between us or amongst us, depending on how you want to look at it. I'm Lynn Cullen, and this is News Talk 1250 WTAE. WTAE. Okay, welcome back. Just a few moments uh, left to uh, to talk. Um, I didn't uh, press Mother Alexandra on the issue of her brother, who was King Carol. But King Carol, anytime you read any accounts of uh, King Carol, they are not—they uh, <laughs> are not exactly flattering. This was uh, this was a, a man who uh, was brought up to be king, but was anything but uh, but a good one. This is the guy who decided uh, that he wanted to run off with his mistress after he'd been king for a while. He wasn't having much fun, so he stuck his little five-year-old boy on the throne, Michael, and took off uh, to take up with his mistress. And then after a while, wearied of that and decided he'd just as soon have the throne back and staged a coup d'etat and took the took the throne away from his son, and then kept the son, Michael, virtually a prisoner in the palace, uh, and kept him often apart from the mother he loved. And this was, this was her brother. This was her brother. She was not, and he eventually was forced out and took off, apparently, absconded with a lot of the family money, the art collection that the family had. He was a real bad man, and now it is this 
poor son of his, Michael, who had this terribly unhappy childhood, as as his aunt, Mother Alexandra, put it, who is hoping to uh, come back to Romania. And by all accounts, and I, I'm talking about accounts I've read in the New York Times and other magazine articles, he is a very shy, a very uh, dignified, honest soul, and uh, not very outgoing, not what you called charismatic, but people seem to uh, respect him. Uh, this King Carol, his father, also married Mother Alexandra off to uh, somebody she didn't love, an Archduke of Austria, I believe. And at some point, she managed to uh, extricate herself from that marriage. She raised six children relatively alone. And by the time she came to this country, I mean, she, this is a woman who has really scrapped uh, in her life, although she was brought up in uh, in castles in in Romania, born to uh, a life of privilege, and uh, as it turned out, having to live a life that was in many respects anything but privileged. But never, ever a hint of any bitterness in this woman, just a sense of incredible resiliency. Bennett in Highland Park, hello. Hi, man. I just wanted to comment. Uh, I, I think it was such a uh, uh, great guest you had. She was so, seemed to be so wonderfully refined and gracious. Yes. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, her family is restored. I think we need more uh, symbolic royalty in, in any case, so you can just tell that the the breeding and the uh, uh, mm -hmm. the just warmth of her uh, of her voice uh, indicates to me that I guess the world needs more of that type of person. Well, she is. Uh, you know, I, I would never be considered somebody who would generally think, yeah, monarchy is a great thing. I mean, I don't want a king or a queen over me. But what she's talking about is a constitutional monarchy, and. And uh, if you do talk to her at length, it is clear that she perceives the role of a monarch uh, as somebody who truly is a servant of the people and not somebody who lords it over the people. And that's how she was brought up. Her brother, unfortunately, I guess, didn't get the message. And one quick question. I didn't catch the whole program. Is she, is she now a, uh, has she entered a religious order? Is that, why, is that where she got the title of mother? Yes, yes. She, uh, after her children were grown uh, and she finished raising them here in the United States, she went to France and, uh, and took vows in, a, uh, in an Orthodox uh, monastery and uh, of, in a contemplative order, too, and took, uh, took her vows and spent her life of, in a very Spartan existence as a, as a nun. And then, and I don't know exactly when, decided to found her own monastery, and she came back here to do that and uh, founded it in the hills uh, near Elwood City. Did you say that she, is, she has been married? Yes, she has been married, and she is the mother of six and the grandmother of many and I think the great-grandmother of a few more. I wasn't aware that uh, uh, you know, people, the women who have previously been married... Uh, oh, yes. Entered. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Is this a Roman Catholic? Is she no, no, Orthodox. Orthodox, but I think that's true of uh, Roman Catholicism, too. Is that right? Yeah. What do I know, Bennett? But I think so. Thank you for your call, by the way. I'm sorry. Why am I always doing that when somebody's in mid-syllable saying, Sean, I'm sorry. I didn't see uh, once, two. Thank you. Excuse me. It's extremely unprofessional, but I needed to know like how much time I had left. And as it turns out, it's not much. Uh, just enough time to tell you some of the things coming up uh, today on this station. Doug Hurst is going to be talking with representatives of local ad firms at 2 o'clock discussing just, well, I guess uh, how far they're willing to go to uh, sell us on a product. At 3, Phil Music will be talking uh, with a gentleman who will be telling us how to establish good credit. It's National Credit Week. And Phil Music's newsmaker at 515, Thomas Sicipio. He is the brother of... American hostage, Joseph Sicipio, and uh, Larry King's guest tonight, Arthur Haley, author of Roots, now author of The Evening News. That's it for me. I'll be back tomorrow because I don't know any better. Hope you will, too. I'm Lynn Cullen. This is News Talk 1250 WTAE.